Hello everyone, and today's video, we are going to be looking at an overview of the process of photosynthesis. So we already know that a lot of uh, organisms rely on this process, rely on the process of photosynthesis in order to stay alive. Um, specifically, photosynthesis is a process that basically captures light energy or solar energy and converts it into a new form of energy which is chemical energy. And it stores this chemical energy in a sugar molecule, specifically in a molecule of glucose. This process is mainly used by autotrophs, which are organisms that make their own food and they're often also referred to as producers. Examples of autotrophs are, are plants, uh, and that's like the most common example of organisms that use photosynthesis. But actually, um, algae and also some types of bacteria, uh, example, cyanobacteria, which are found in um, water bodies, they are able to photosynthesize, which means that they can capture the sunlight and convert it into sugar or make their own food, um, just like plants can. Now, photosynthesis happens in two main stages. The first step or the first stage is the light dependent reactions. And the second step or stage includes the light independent reactions, um, often known as the Calvin cycle. So before we kind of dive into the two main stages of photosynthesis, I want us to be familiar with the structure and the logistics in terms of like, where is everything happening inside a plant cell, okay? So within a plant cell or within a, um, you know, photosynthetic cell, uh, of course, the main organelle that we want to focus on is the chloroplast because the chloroplast is the organelle that uh, contains all the photosynthetic elements that are going to be used during this process. Now, if we take a look at the, um, the chloroplast, we notice several, several things. First of all, it has a double membrane, which we already know whenever we hear the word membrane, we need to think of protection, right? So it has an outer and an inner membrane for extra protection. And it also has, I don't want to say folds, but folds or stacks. Okay, so you'll notice that the um, structures that are found inside of the chloroplast are stacked on top of one another. And here we have a question that I want you to think about. Why do you think the um, structures that are found inside the chloroplast are stacked or folded? If we kind of go back to what we talked about in terms of how structure is related to function, we will find that this highly uh, folded characteristic of the uh, structures inside the chloroplast or the, um, the stacking of the um, inner parts of this chloroplast allows for a higher surface area in order to create more glucose or to absorb more light or to allow more reactions to occur. So to answer this question, why do we have these folds? Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, why do we have the folds or why do we have these stacks? To increase surface area for more reactions. In this case, these reactions are allowing the chloroplast to take in sunlight and make sugar or make glucose. Now, let's kind of look at the different parts of the chloroplast in more details. So you'll notice that we have this disc-shaped uh, structure, and there's this yellow fluid or jelly-like fluid that kind of fills the chloroplast, okay? Now, we know that cytoplasm fills a cell, but this fluid-like uh, material that fills the chloroplast, which is represented here in the, I guess, light green or light yellow um, color, is known as the stroma, okay? And the stroma is um, where the light independent reactions are going to take place. On the other hand, we have these green disc-shaped structures, which are known as the thylakoids, and this is where the light dependent reactions are going to take place. All right. Now, if you look back at the order, the light dependent reactions happen first, and then this is followed by the light independent reactions. So essentially, the reactions are going to start here at the thylakoids, and this is where light is absorbed or taken in. And this makes sense because it, it's reflected by the name. Okay. So we have light dependent 
means that it depends on the presence of light. It requires light to happen, right? And in this in this step during the light dependent reactions, um, the light is absorbed uh, so that later on it can be converted into chemical energy. Once light is absorbed inside these thylakoids, the light independent reactions, which right away from the name, we can kind of guess what's happening here, right? Light independent means that it does not need, it does not depend on, it does not require light, okay? It's independent of light. Um, sometimes these reactions are known as the dark reactions, uh, which means that they don't need to, they don't need light to occur. That doesn't necessarily mean that they happen only at night. It just means that they don't need light to occur. So the dark reactions are going to take place inside the stroma. And during the dark reactions, the actual glucose or sugar molecule is going to be synthesized or made. So just to quickly um, summarize, what you need to know is that the chloroplast is the main photosynthetic organelle. Uh, and there are two main parts that you need to be familiar with. The thylakoid, which are these green stacks, okay, or the green discs, and the stroma, which is the yellow um, or fluid, fluid-like substance that fills the uh, chloroplast and surrounds the thylakoids. Notice that the thylakoids are stacked, okay? They're found in these stacks, one on top of the other. This stack is known as a granum. Okay, a granum right here. You can see the word granum. It just means that we are we are referring to a stack of these thylakoids. And again, we have the stacking to increase surface area for more reactions. All right, so um, I kind of already covered a lot of this, uh, but one thing that you need to be familiar with is thylakoids, because this is where the light reactions are happening, it contains something known, or it contains a special part known as a pigment, okay? Or it contains a special molecule known as a pigment molecule. Now, the word pigment, when you think about that word, what comes to mind? Pigment usually refers to maybe color, right? The pigment of something is the shade or the color that it's at, but it also is a, a pigment is a light absorbing molecule. The reason why we see color is because light is absorbed by certain cells in our eyes. And, you know, this message is related to our brain, which kind of like determines what color we're viewing. Um, so a pigment molecule is, is basically a molecule that absorbs light. And this is found obviously inside of the thylakoid because that's where the light reactions are gonna happen. Now, um, what specifically is this pigment molecule? Well, there are several, but the main pigment molecule that is found inside the thylakoid and that you need to be familiar with is the chlorophyll. And you might've heard of the chlorophyll pigment before. Chlorophyll is what gives a plant its green color. It's a pigment that absorbs um, visible light. And it specifically absorbs red and blue light and it reflects green light. And that is why plants appear green, okay? So think about it. If a color is reflected, it will be reflected back to our eyes where our eyes can actually pick it up and interpret the color. If a color is absorbed, it won't reach our eyes, which means we don't see it. So what I'm trying to say here is that even though chlorophyll, um, or even though the visible light or the white light that we see contains violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Basically, all of the colors of the rainbow are condensed into, or when you combine them, they make white light. So even though these, these colors of light essentially exist, when we look at a plant, we only see the green part of that spectrum because that is the color that is reflected back to us. Okay, so here we have a graph and um, essentially what this is showing is the different wavelengths of light. And at each wavelength, we have a different color and how much of the wavelength is absorbed is shown on the y-axis. So for chlorophyll, and there's two kinds of chlorophyll, chlorophyll A and B, but they kind of act in the same way. So we just 
Um, we don't really discriminate for the purposes of this course. So chlorophyll in general, you'll notice uh, where does the, the majority of the absorption happen? So the peaks are around here, right? Around violet, around blue, and around red. So what does this mean? What is this graph showing us? This graph is showing us that um, chlorophyll, this pigment, which is found inside, the, inside of the thylakoid, mainly absorbs, okay, at the peaks here, it mainly absorbs violet light and it mainly absorbs blue light and red. So it absorbs violet, blue, and red. If a color is absorbed, again, it will not be visible to us. We don't see plants usually as being violet or blue or red. However, look at the minimum point, okay? So the minimum point, if it's not absorbed, it means that it's reflected. So um, the minimum point of absorption happens around the green color or the green wavelength. So this means that green color is not absorbed, it's reflected back to us, and that is why plants usually appear green. All right, so um, the next or uh, the next part of the chloroplast that I was highlighting is the stroma. And if you remember, it's the site of, um, this is where uh, dark reactions or light independent reactions happen. Um, the stroma is a colorless fluid. And if you remember, the reason why it's a fluid is because usually fluids have a lot of water in them. Water is polar. If something is polar, it allows uh, the dissolving of other substances, which means that a lot of chemical reactions can happen inside of it. So it kind of reminds us of the chloroplast in the sense that it is a fluid. And this is significant because it allows um, reactants and substrates to be dissolved, which helps rea uh, chemical reactions occur. Um, so again, the stroma is the site of light independent reactions. So if we look at an overall equation of photosynthesis, and you need to be familiar with this, our main reactants, remember reactants always occur before the arrow in a chemical reaction. Our main, main reactants are carbon dioxide, which is represented by this formula, water, with the help of sunlight, because you need an energy source, will create sugar, specifically glucose, C6H12O6 is a formula for glucose, and finally, uh, oxygen is, is made and released as a byproduct. Now, in the next video, we are going to be going through um, the light-dependent and the light-independent reactions in more details.